cost of living of an Indian family living in Germany in 2024. I have already made a cost of living video in 2022. But in between then and now, there have been multiple changes in both Germany as well as in my private life. So I decided to make another new video exhibiting the latest expenses to show you the current situation of an Indian family living in Germany. Let's get started. For the context, last time when I made the video, I was living in a city called Nuremberg, that too in the city center. But now I am not living in a big city, it's a small city that is 50 kilometers away from Munich. And we are a family of three with one income and my child is going to kindergarten. She is only four and a half years old for now. Starting with the major cost, that is housing. In this category, I have grouped multiple expenses together as housing just for simplicity first one is rent as you might be already aware renting in germany includes two different costs the first one is cold rent the actual rent only for the house second one is warm rent warm rent is nothing but cold rent plus nieben cost nieben cost means additional costs in german what are those additional costs it includes heating of the house and also handling your garbages. In some apartment buildings, there are also other ancillary costs that can be added into this Nieben cost. But as a whole, this comes to warm rent. Warm rent is the one which you will be paying to the landlord every month. In our case, we are living in an unfurnished house which is of 72 square meter in size. Our cold rent is 950 euros and Nieben cost is 200 euros. We are also having an underground parking which costs 60 euros every month. For now, we do not have a car, but the apartment came along with the parking when it came for the rent. In our case, the landlord suggested that take the parking with you and if you want, you can rent it to someone else. But until you rent it, you need to pay the rent for it. So as a whole, I am paying 1210 euros every month as warm rent, including the parking. Even though we are living in a very small city, still this is not a very less rent. 1200 is comparatively costlier than some of the big cities also. It is because of the demand that industries has created that are placed around this area. Second cost for housing is private liability insurance. This is an insurance to cover some of the damages that can happen at your apartment. It is highly recommended to take this insurance, but most important thing is that you need to include all your family members in this insurance when you are applying for it. If you quickly do a Google search about private liability insurance, you will get to know a lot of things. In short, it covers the personal damage like while walking on the road mistakenly causing a collision, then object damage like if you lost your apartment keys and you need to break the lock and open the door, or the locksmith charges, or if you spill coffee on someone else's laptop, etc. These are some of the examples in which you can use your private liability insurance. I took this insurance from the provider called GetSafe as they have English support also. I paid somewhere close to 50 euro per annum for all my family members. If I need to convert it to monthly cost, then it comes somewhere close to 4.16 euro per month. Third cost for the housing is electricity or energy as it is called here. In Germany for electricity there are a lot of options available. Even if it is a small city still you have more than 2-3 options to get electricity to your house. In case if you fail to choose any electricity provider at the time of your movement, the city's default electricity provider that is the government's electricity provider usually, they will take over and they will give you the electricity. The idea is that the electricity is always provided to every household. Unless you make any blunders with some contracts and other stuff, you will never have any day without electricity in your house. In our case, we have chosen the cities, the government's electricity provider, and we pay 128 euros every month. Generally, you pay a fixed amount every month, and by the end of the year, during the December month, the provider calculates your usage and checks if you have paid enough money or more money. In case if you paid more, they will refund it in the month of January. In case if you paid less, then they will ask you to pay the remaining balance in the month of January. 
This is how it works. For us, last year we have paid more than our usage, so we got the refund in the month of January. Fourth cost for housing is internet. In our case, we use Vodafone's cable internet with 100 Mbps speed and we pay 40 euros every month for this. Our internet provider actually gave us an offer. Initial six months, we don't need to pay 40 euros. We paid somewhere close to 20 euros. But after six months, we need to start paying 40 euros. Usually this internet contract is made for two years or so. Initial six months, you will have this offer. But for the remaining 18 months, you will need to pay the original cost. The initial six months offer is kind of a welcome offer. And the fifth cost for housing is broadcasting fee. You can also call it as radio and TV fees. This is something every household needs to pay in Germany, no matter whether you watch the TV or listen to the radio or not. This cost is used by the government to make shows or create content for the government TV and radio channels. At least this is my understanding. This can be paid in three months once or six months once. In our case, we pay quarterly once and we pay 56 euros. But if I need to convert it into monthly cost, then it will come back close to 19 euros. Now let us sum up all these five expenses as part of housing that comes close to 1210 for rent, 5 euros for insurance, 128 for electricity, 40 euros for internet and 19 euros for radio and television. So altogether the housing cost finally 1402 euros. So base housing cost for us is 1402 euros. Let us now move to the next category that is food expenses. In this local groceries from the supermarkets and meat shops we pay somewhere close to 350 euros every month. For Indian groceries, we pay somewhere close to 100 euros every month. Initially, we used to spend little more than this, around 150 or 200. But we started finding some alternatives from German supermarkets itself. That's why we are not spending much on the Indian groceries, but more on the local groceries. Next cost in the food is eating outside. Mostly we are cooking at home. We are not eating much outside but every alternate weekends we either go to Munich or somewhere within our area some other restaurants and also sometimes in the evenings if we just go for a walk we take some kebab or ice creams things like that. So I add all of these into eating outside and this roughly comes around 200 euros every month. Now grouping all the food expenses together 350 plus 100 plus 200. So it's totally 650 euros only for food expenses every month. Next category is commuting or travel. I and my wife we both have the Deutschland tickets for ourselves. Each Deutschland ticket costs 49 euros. So together we pay 98 euros for Deutschland tickets. But as I said, we live in a small city and we would like to go to Munich every alternative weekends. During weekends, we do not have public transport in my city. It is available only till 1.15 p.m. on Saturday. And after that, there is no local transportation. That's why whenever we come back from Munich late evening or night, we always take taxis to our house, from the Bonhof to our house. It's not very far since it's a small city, but still we do not want to walk during that time. It is somewhere close to two and a half kilometers or so. The taxi costs used to come around 50 euros per month for us. In total for commuting and for taxi fare, this comes close to 148 euros every month. Please note that in case if there is no Deutschland ticket, in Germany then this costs would shoot up to even bigger number. Next cost is kindergarten. Our daughter goes to kindergarten and it is a state sponsored kindergarten so we are paying 148 euros every month and our daughter stays in the kindergarten for six and a half hours like from 8 30 in the morning and until three o'clock in the afternoon. Next cost is medical. Usually all the expenses are covered in our insurance card itself. So we generally do not pay anything outside that insurance card. But sometimes if we need some tablets or syrups or any other stuff that we need to purchase from the apotheke, that is the pharmacy here, then we used to spend around 50 euros every month for this. Actually, we do not spend it every month. 
because we don't need it every month for example if we take appointment for my doctor at the kinder hospital then all the medicines are provided by the government itself so we don't pay this 50 euros every month but i always add this 50 euro in our budget next mobile costs my wife and i we have a sim card from the supermarket called as lidl the sim is known as lidl connect every four weeks once we pay eight euros for each of our plan so in total we pay 16 euros for this next important category is household expenses this is a broad category that includes one-time expenses as well as recurring expenses that is required for the well functioning of my house this includes buying mob or by buying papers for the printer, buying ink, cartridges or any other similar stuff. And we are also not buying dresses every month or we are not buying shoes every month. But I know there are some households who like to do shopping every month, but we are not doing that. That's why I am not providing a separate category for it. Instead, I am adding it in the household expenses category. Sometimes we also shoes, toys, bags for my kid. Those all come into this category. Usually, we spend around 200 euros every month in this category. And we are not very particular about buying dresses or things only from a specific store. If there are good dresses or shoes from the supermarket, still we buy it. And if we also need to buy something from H&M, CNA or any other similar bigger brands we still do that as what i'm trying to say is whatever makes sense for us or our needs we try to purchase it from the kinds of different shops and finally miscellaneous category here i add the costs of any travels what we plan to do because we do not have regular travel plans currently so every three months once or four months once if there is any plan with our friends we travel to their place or locally if we meet other friends then we go somewhere with them so these kind of expenses or the unplanned expenses those are coming into this miscellaneous category and we spend around 250 euros in this category every month as a whole if i summarize then for housing 1402 euros for food 650 euros for commuting 148 euros for medical 50 euros, kindergarten 148 euros, mobile 16 euros, household 200 euros, miscellaneous 250 euros. In total 2864 euros. There will be a plus or minus of 150 euros sometimes. So to conclude this video, I can say that for an Indian family of three who are living in a small city in Bavaria, it can cost from 2800 to 3000 euros that is the conclusion of this video in case if you have liked this content then please give a thumbs up to this video and write your questions or thoughts in the comments if you know someone of your friends or families who are willing to move to germany and they are researching about cost of living then please share this video with them and if you have enjoyed this video you might also like this video where i have discussed about how much money you can save in germany from your germany job thank you for watching this video i will see you in this video or in my next video